This podcast is brought to you by Blackbee Ministries International. To find out more, visit blackbee.org. Well, welcome to the Richard Blackaby Leadership Podcast. My name is Sam, and I'm your host, and I get to sit across from the one and only Dr. Richard Blackaby. That's right. Good to be with you once again, Sam. Always. I can never say that enough. Yeah. Well, just one more <laughs> time, at least. Uh, well, it's always a pleasure, and uh, we we look at these uh, leaders from history from time to time, mm-hmm. and we're going to do that today. And, uh, you know, sometimes we, we go way back, 2,000 years plus. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. it's within your lifetime we look at uh, yeah, some of these. Yeah, just barely got in there, well, but yeah, made it. Yeah. <laughs> and so today we're going to look at the life and legacy of JFK. Yeah, talk about uh, a, a, a person who has fascinated historians uh, ever since uh, he came on the scene. Uh, JFK, uh, in many ways, is one of the most popular uh, U.S. presidents. Um, and, uh, you know, he's one of those kind of people that, again, he, he's flawed, uh, as are all the leaders that we look at. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you have to sort of peel away a lot of things. Uh, he, he remains quite popular for most of his, uh, his term as president. Uh, even after some pretty significant failures, like the Bay of Pigs fiasco yeah. in Cuba, uh, interestingly, he, that was probably one of his most humiliating, uh, frustrating moments as president. And yet, I think his uh, approval rating went up ten percent afterward. Like he just, he had this sort of charm about him that uh, the the press obviously loved him and. And I think we've kind of seen over the years, if the press loves you, they they can certainly put the best light on you, yeah. even if uh, they'll, they'll you're not as good. They'll smooth over those rough edges, for uh, sure. And uh, he was very, he knew how to play the press. He knew how to charm them. He was a, he's a charming individual. And uh, because of that, uh, the press didn't report a lot of things on him that could have severely hurt him. Uh, but he's a... He's uh, one of these guys that has so so many aspects to him, and I, maybe the last thing, well, I mean, at the, the end of his life, the fact that he dies in such a dramatic uh, fashion with an assassination in Dallas, uh, uh, you know, sometimes lives like his and MLK and um, and uh, Lincoln and some people that are are killed, even maybe maybe a lesser extent, someone like. Uh, uh, Franklin Roosevelt, who dies uh, in office, um, it, it it does something to their reputation as well. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's almost a, it, it has a way of solidifying perhaps the more positive aspects of. You feel, of, yeah, of you get a little more sympathy, and, and um, yeah, you know, and you, you feel that they, you know, you you can at least assume that they would have gone on to do better things. Um, and not be proven otherwise, because yeah. you, you wonder with somebody like JFK, like what would have happened had he stayed in office and just yeah. lived a long life. And because he he was a politically, a, he 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 learned a lot. He he was he was definitely a politician who who f- was very aware of what would what people would like or what would be popular to to do. And uh, uh, and so he, but you also think, he, but he, in some ways, especially with this sexual life and escapades and so on that has become so notorious that you know to to live as recklessly as that in one sense you know how long could he keep that out of the press you know the it's almost yeah. like at what point does that become a liability for yeah him? and so yeah. it's sort of like if, if he'd been remained in office for another term you know the the there certainly could have been some scandals that that harmed his reputation but he's He's cut off early in life, and when he was, uh, when he was, well, I, I would say, you know, he he grew up in a home of a father, Joe Kennedy, that was a, a very very ambitious man himself. It was self, he basically, had made himself uh, very wealthy, and uh, he he hungered for power himself. Yeah, but uh, was a was a tough kind of guy. Uh, and uh um, he, he was a bit of a kingmaker figure wasn't he or no well he uh you know it's interesting i mean he he had a lot of influence and a lot of money and uh was kind of tied into a lot of the uh the irish um kind of 
mafia and and uh, and that that group but um but he he um he was never able to necessarily gain a lot of of office himself he was made uh, the u.s ambassador to england for a while under uh, franklin roosevelt but uh, roosevelt never really respected him actually kind of would even humiliate him in, at times hmm. and so kennedy tried to you know go as far as he could he, he I mean he went a lot farther than any of his relatives had but i think he then he sort of put his uh his hopes into his sons, you know, the, 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 with his money and prodding that they would, they would stand on his shoulders and achieve what, what he was unable to. And so he created a lot of competition among his sons. And, you know, he also was uh, a womanizer. Uh, the, the, his boys grew up basically watching their dad uh, womanizing and committing adultery. And so, I mean, it's, it, you know exactly where, JFK got it from. He grew right. up w in an environment like that with his dad, uh, and his dad created all kinds of competition. And it, the, all the boys, the boys were uh, loyal to each other, but they were, they all were given a, a fierce sense of competition. And uh, and JFK, of course, had an older brother, Joe Kennedy, that would be killed in World War II. Uh, and again the fate of history you know yeah that makes jfk the oldest son and so then everything falls on him uh if his brother's airplane had not blown up over the english channel um then joe kennedy would have been the first guy probably to run for president but uh again just some of the fate of of history how it works out um and you know kennedy was uh smart he uh he went to Harvard. He uh, was on the dean's list. He, you know, was not not a slouch. Sometimes politicians have a pretty uh, sorry kind of academic record, but uh, but Kennedy was smart. Had a good mind. Um, he's going to write a couple of books. Uh, one, of course, profiles in courage will actually win the Pulitzer Prize. So uh, that made him a bit of a celebrity. He was also a war hero. He. He was in the Navy. Uh, he was commanded a PT boat. And uh, actually, at one point, a, a, a Japanese destroyer actually cut his boat right in half. It, it rammed his boat, uh, cut it in half. And uh, Kennedy had to help uh, the, the, the surviving crew swim to a nearby island. And, uh, and he, and he uh, there was one uh, sailor that was uh, badly burned. And Kennedy hauled him uh, all the way to a nearby island he at one point had the uh, the ropes from the uh, his life jacket in his mouth and he was swimming and tugging this uh, guy all the way to the island and saved his life and and he'll actually swim a couple of miles to some other nearby islands trying to find food and tr trying to get you know get rescued uh, and so he'll win some medals for that uh, ultimately Kennedy also had, had some, uh, the other thing about Kennedy was he physically had a lot of ailments. He had a really bad back. And of course he suffered from Addison's uh, disease, which, uh, which he had to treat with all kinds of uh, concussions. He, he basically was heavily medicated uh, through most of his adult life. Mm. Um, and uh, was so sickly in fact that, uh, uh, for, not sickly, but he was, he suffered so much from, the pain of his back, the pain of Addison's disease that, uh, that they said that, uh, well, at least four times that he actually, he was, he's, of course he was Catholic and on four occasions, they actually read him his last rites thinking that he was going to die. And, uh, wow. that's how close he came, but he would, he would come back, but, um, he would, uh, he had to give himself uh, heavy duty injections. And there was a lot of uh, speculation about some of the doctors that the kind of painkillers they gave him, you know, he would be almost high just from, and it, it was causing a lot of people just wonder, you know, doubt that he ever could have lived a long life just because he was in so much pain. The medication that he was on. Yeah. The medications. At one point, one of his colleagues was in the white house with him, the oval office. And, uh, it was time for his medication and JFK kind of jabbed himself with this big, thick needle from the sixties. And, uh, and his friend said, uh, does that hurt? Like, I mean, cause he just, it was so routine. It was like a diabetic, you know, you're just so used to needles that he just poked it in. And apparently JFK took the needle and jabbed it into the guy, his, the guy's leg. <laughs> and the guy, 
the guy kind of screamed out and said, uh, wow, that, like, ow, like that hurts. And JFK said, and that's how I feel every solitary time. Uh, and so he's dealing with this kind of pain. They said that JFK actually spent oftentimes half the day or more in bed. He, he, he worked from bed because, and he had to take a nap every afternoon because he was just, I think from the medication, he was so tired that, uh, and of course, interestingly, uh, Winston Churchill was his hero. Uh, he actually wrote, his other book was on the whole appeasement uh, in Munich with Germany and a book called While England Slept. And, uh, but he really admired Churchill as being someone who was tough on uh, Nazi Germany and so on. And, yeah. And so he, uh, and so the, while Kennedy's in office, he's going to uh, promote the arts and he loved having uh, people come in that were celebrities. Of course, he, he's a, He's a, a good friend with Frank Sinatra, and uh, a lot of the a lot of the Sinatra's uh, Hollywood and and entertainment friends, uh, Bing Crosby and so on. They all love uh, JFK, and so he's when, when he uh, runs for office, he's uh, you know he's written some books. He's a decorated war hero. He actually when he when he becomes president, he is the youngest man uh, to be elected president. I think he was thirty three or so. Uh, or 43, but uh, uh, I think I think technically Theodore Roosevelt was a year younger than him, but he wasn't elected president. He he was a vice president who became president uh, when McKinley died, was assassinated. But uh, but at that time JFK is the young at, at 43 is the youngest man to be elected president. Mm. And uh, I think uh, I think Grant was probably in his mid 40s when he was elected, but. Uh, but Kennedy holds that record, and uh, uh, and it, interestingly, he when he runs, uh, first he's a he's a he's in the House of Representatives as a congressman uh, for Massachusetts, and uh, and then he becomes uh, a senator for several years, about six years or so, uh, or seven, and then um, in 1960 he decides to run for office as president. And uh, there's some things going against him. One, he's Catholic, and of course, that doesn't mean anything really to us now. But uh, back then, there was still a lot of fears of the Catholic Church. Was it a world uh, empire that dominated countries and yeah. so on? And and so, of course, that all those fears were played upon against him. He would have been the first uh, Catholic, I think, president to uh, first Catholic to be president. Yeah, which is kind of interesting to all the way to the 1960s. Yeah, but, it's surprising that it. Took uh, but that, that was long. a big deal, you know. Like, will the Pope actually be running the United States if Kennedy is elected and so on? Um, and and Kennedy runs against uh, Richard Nixon, and Richard Nixon had been the vice president of Dwight Eisenhower for eight years, and so and Dwight Eisenhower didn't like Nixon. But it was a con he was a convenient person to uh, uh, to be his vice president, and so Nixon has dutifully been a VP for eight years under Eisenhower, who's very popular, and uh, and now it's his turn. Is now it's his time, and so he's going to run against this upstart Kennedy, uh, and uh, and they're 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 actually not that far apart in age, but Kennedy just exudes. Um, uh, youth and charm and yeah. vibrancy and strength. And Nixon just always looks kind of dour. He always looks kind of awkward in front of people. And, and famously, this was the, they actually have a series of debates or a debate. And, um, and it's the first time for, for presidential candidates to debate on live television. Yeah. And Kennedy, of course, seizes, uh, the technology of the time and uh, and he he looks calm and he looks confident and he has a great sense of humor and well, he, Nixon, look, he looks good on TV compared yeah, to Nixon. You know, and yeah. it's interesting. They said that the drug that you use for Addison's d disease, uh, some of the side effects were that you, it would make your face a little bloated, kind of like uh, uh, you know certain certain kind of drugs that will will kind of make you swell his but also it made your hair thick and and full and it also kind of gave you a natural looking tan and so <laughs> so the you know even something as yeah. uh, debilitating as addison's disease has, has he, he's advantages. got this yeah. full head of hair and and this natural sort of seemingly natural tan 
Well, especially um, under the the lights and stuff that that yeah. plays to his advantage. And they said that uh, Nixon, d- d- he just he wasn't helped as well. Like uh, they, he had like a five o'clock shadow that made him just kind of look darker. And of course, it's black and white TV then, and so it just made Nixon kind of look darker, uh, unkempt. And uh, Kennedy actually used makeup, and I mean he he went all he embraced out. Embraced it, and he, yeah, he, and he. He understood uh, image, you know, and uh, how important that was, how you appeared. And, uh, of course, he's married to Jacqueline Kennedy, who becomes very, uh, very popular as a a first lady. And so they just, uh, they're an attractive couple. They've got these young kids. uh, And, of course, Eisenhower would be the oldest person to be elected president in his day. And he was very popular because he had basically won world war ii for the americans and so you go from the most and so he's very popular as the oldest president ever and then you're going to have a very popular youngest president ever following him and so as you go into the 1960s these baby boomers are all really emerging on the scene Um, you just have this sense that uh, people are wanting to get past world war ii and some of the challenges involved and uh they want um to, to they're just drawn to someone who's optimistic and youthful looking and and the interesting thing is that you know there's probably been few presidents who were in worse health than Kennedy was yeah that's the that's uh, such and, an irony and yet he worked hard kind of like uh, you know Franklin Roosevelt did the same thing he when he was in a wheelchair he was on crutches all of the camera shots were taken in a way where you didn't see his crutches you didn't see him in a wheelchair he he would prop himself up behind a platform and look vigorous and strong. And then once the, the cameras were had taken their pictures, he'd flop back down. And so, you know, of course, I think even to this day, I think with Joe Biden uh, as president, as an older person, you know, you I think we, we probably wonder how much, I mean, we, well, we know that there's a lot of image uh, issues of how do we make this person look as vibrant and, and yeah. together as we can. and. That that that's nothing new. Uh, I think every president has done that, trying to get the right photo ops. For sure. Uh, but Kennedy was a early master at that, and uh, he wowed the the press. And so uh, he, but he wins by not much, just over like 108,000 votes. It's the only thing that separates in the popular vote between Kennedy and Nixon. It was very close. Nixon actually was leading in the polls right up to the election, it was by as much as six or eight points, and so. It was a stunning victory for Kennedy, and he knew full well 100,000 votes set for the whole nation. Uh, that was just razor thin, razor yeah. thin. And, uh, and so he kept that number, actually, in front of him. He, it, it said that he kept the, the number of votes he won by, uh, in his view, throughout his presidency to always remind himself of how close it was. And, uh, of course, he wants to re- win re-election. He wants to uh, be president a second term. And he, and, he, and he always had a mind for history. He loved history. You know, he loved reading about people like Churchill. And, um, and, he, and so oftentimes, he, he, as he's leading, he's thinking about his legacy. What will people read about me? In fact, he actually, interestingly, he actually instituted uh, tape recording of conversations in the, in the Oval Office. He actually sets up a recording system so that he can have a record of all of his calls for international, uh, you know, politics and so on, because he wants the historians to be able to write about him, uh, or he wants to write about it later, and he wants an accurate record. Interestingly, it'll be that same recording system that will record Richard Nixon and will become the Watergate tapes. Uh, and so Nick, so, uh, Kennedy's going to sort of bring down, in a sense, Nixon later yeah. uh, by recording everything that Nixon said. And basically, when those tapes came out and were discovered, that's that's when Nixon has to resign, or he does resign as a result of that. So here's a guy looking to make history. He's young. He's following uh, a very popular president in Eisenhower. He wants to make a difference. And um, maybe after the break, we can talk a bit about what he gets hit with. Let's do that. Learn how to ask better questions to help move people onto God's agenda. 
Register now for the next Spiritual Leadership Coaching Workshop, October 21st through the 23rd in Jonesboro, Georgia. Find out more information and register at blackabycoaching.org slash workshop. Links will be in the show notes. So we've got uh, Kennedy making history, the, you know, the youngest president elected, sort of the, the essence of youth and vitality despite his, his ailments. Um, so what, what sort of things make him um, that, that successful leader that he was? Well, one thing he he learned by mistakes, uh, and of course, his probably his biggest mistake was the Bay of Pigs. Uh, and what happened is his military people all come, and they and they give him reports that they want to give him. They they tell him what they want him to hear. That and and basically what they said is that all of Cuba was a powder keg and just looking for uh, an excuse to overthrow Fidel Castro. And so if they could just land these 1,500 uh, Cuban soldiers on the shore, that all of Cuba would rise up in their defense. And and uh, and so Kennedy's leery of this. He's not really predisposed to just invade another country, but, but having communist country in Cuba, only about 90 miles from the Florida coast, uh, yeah. is an insult uh, to... Uh, to America and and, uh, and and we we lose sight of this now, but back then uh, it, it, it it had not been all that long that uh, that the Soviet Union and the United States had built a nuclear arsenal to the point where they yeah. could destroy the known world. I mean, and we kind of forget that now. I mean, but that's I mean, it's, yeah, it's still it's, the case. It's, it's but... very much so that this world could end in a nuclear holocaust to this very day. But back then, it was born to them they that you know used to be grew up on a farm in kansas somewhere and you the thought of nuclear holocaust never crossed your mind but all of a sudden you realize these communists down in cuba could with their with missiles could could strike every every major city in in the u.s and so um so there's there's this fear of this growing tide of communism and so the way that you um felt like you could get elected is if, if you're strong against communism and, and people have this fear of what, what the, these evil communists will do. And so you want to elect a president who will protect you and keep you safe. And so Kennedy knew that he had to appear tough, um, against communism or else, cause Nixon had kind of built a reputation as a war hawk against communism. And so Kennedy is always aware of that and the of the of the politics involved. So, so he basically listens to his military advisors, and and it becomes a fiasco. They the fifteen hundred soldiers hit the beaches, um, and 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 Kennedy uh, ultimately decides to not let uh, the U.S. Air if the if they let the U.S. Air Force uh, just pound the Cuban defenses, they, they might have well won that invasion. But, yeah. uh, but Kennedy realizes, well, this is just going to look really bad. We, we talk about being a nation protecting peace and liberty, and here we are putting our own soldiers and Air Force in to destroy, you know, to take over another country. And he didn't like the optics of that. And so he holds back the Air Force. And I mean, that just makes the the invaders just sitting ducks and the Cuban army is a lot bigger and it's just a rout. It's a massacre. Yeah. And it's a humiliating moment for, for Kennedy. And it angers him that he realizes he's this, he's this young, uh, inexperienced president and these, uh, all these military and, and, and CIA, uh, advisors had basically just sort of told him what he needed to do. And he had done it and he vowed he'd never do that again. And that he would uh, he he would not just trust the experts uh, that uh, and just what they told him that he'd ask more questions and uh, of course he famously brings Robert Kennedy his younger brother into his uh, cabinet and basically he just said I need at least one person around me who'll tell me the truth tell I mean Robert really admired his brother but he would disagree with him and he would yeah. challenge him. And uh, one of the places he had disagreed with him on was uh, who his vice president would be. Uh, and Kennedy chose Lyndon Johnson and, and he, di- he didn't like Johnson. Johnson was a blowhard, arrogant, kind of uh, crass, kind of power hungry person. 
but he was very influential in Texas. And because Kennedy was from Massachusetts up in New England, he really felt like to, to win the, he needed to win Texas. And, yeah. and basically if he won Texas, he thought he had a, a narrow chance of winning the election. So interestingly, kind of like with Franklin Roosevelt, he had no real friendship or uh, anything liking for Truman. It just, it was kind of convenient. And yeah. some of these convenient choices end up becoming president. Um, and so, uh, so they, he actually, he and his brother used to make fun of Lyndon Johnson, but, but anyway, he, he the second thing, a second setback for Kennedy was that he um, uh, he goes to meet with Khrushchev, who's the head of the Soviet Union. They meet in Vienna, and uh, and Kennedy was a a charmer. You know, they just he he had a lot of confidence in his ability. If he's one on one with someone, that he'll be able to charm them uh, into liking him, and and so on. And uh, historians say that Khrushchev was just a bull in a china cabinet and uh, was a tough communist who'd been through all kinds of things. And, uh, and basically, he ran r- roughshod over Kennedy. Kennedy just, his, na- his normal charm just didn't work on Khrushchev. And, yeah. And, and rarely does on the Russians. Yeah. <laughs> and especially got Khrushchev. And so they, uh, Kennedy was humiliated and basically. After that meeting, Khrushchev came away thinking that the Kennedy was weak, right? And that that Kennedy uh, that he could get away with stuff with Kennedy, and Kennedy would not push back. And so, after that meeting, Khrushchev basically uh, decides to you know pursue putting those missiles in Cuba, and uh, and he thinks that now Kennedy won't won't face him down. And it's a it's a political gamble. It's a huge risk on Khrushchev's part. But of course, probably the most famous uh, moment in uh, Kennedy's life, at least until he's assassinated, was when uh, the U.S. spy planes detect what looks like missile launching pads being built in Cuba. And the, the, the type of missiles that would have been put in at that time would have been uh, capable of hitting pretty well every major city, but perhaps Seattle. And so... Uh, that becomes a, a crucial moment in Kennedy's rule. And now the, the U.S. had put some missiles in Turkey, which w- would be similar to uh, Cuba for the U.S. You know, missiles that close in Turkey could go into the Soviet Union. Yeah. And that was a real irritant to the Russians. And those missiles were actually archaic, like out-of-date kind of missiles. They just had to put them somewhere, so they put them in Turkey. But... Um, and that was an irritant to the Soviet Union. So ultimately, as we know the story, this time Kennedy dealt with things differently. Uh, he kept being told by his military advisors, you need just to go in and bomb the, the missile sites. You need to invade and take over Cuba and shut this thing down. But he's very much aware of the optics of that. What would that look like? And so ultimately, of course, they, they set up a naval blockade and Khrushchev is going to, he's been a bully to, to, Kennedy and and seen him as weak and so he just thinks that he won't go through with it that uh, they'll that he'll back down and this time Kennedy stands firm and certainly probably one of the most crucial moments in American history if there was ever a moment where a nuclear war could have taken place that that certainly would have been it and uh, they literally have gone to the highest level of alert uh, I've, the, you know the next step is push the button. And, you know, I've been to some of the, uh, to the places where those 1960s missile bases were. And, you know, what's incredible is that, you know, your and my iPhone today has got more computer technology than those missile launching pads had, you know. And the, the, the survival of the human race is being determined or could have been determined by computer systems that now are just archaic well and i think there were so many like just near misses just from faulty like radar and you know you know the soviets thought that oh this is you know we see missiles coming over but it was turned out to just be like a some you know uh you know, bird or whatever yeah. that like it just you know yeah. some it could have been if so so just razor thin yeah yeah and uh of course, he ultimately he he stands firm. They do stop uh, some Russian ships, and uh, 
Um, and that, that actually is the undoing of Khrushchev. Khrushchev, uh, at that point, is humiliated in his own country, and they ultimately he is overthrown uh, by his own party. Uh, and this is kind of the last straw where he blusters and, uh, and, and he loses to Kennedy. And so Kennedy had a number of other things that he's known for. Uh, uh, you know, he, he was very impassioned. He, he, uh, interestingly, when he was an er, a younger politician, uh, he wasn't a very good uh, speech giver, apparently. He spoke too fast. He had a heavy Massachusetts, New England accent. Yeah. He was hard to understand. And ultimately, he actually got a, 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 a speech coach to help him and, and told him to slow down, don't talk so fast, uh, gave him some key tips. And, and again, it's kind of interesting. You know, Winston Churchill practiced giving speeches, too. Yeah. Uh, he had a lisp and a stutter and had to overcome a lot of things. Uh, and Kennedy, of course, says some things like, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. He, he, he had some famous lines in his yeah. first, in his only inaugura- inaugural address. Uh, but, he, but it's in that time also where the civil rights movement is taking place and Martin Luther King Jr. is marching. And uh, at one point, and I, I don't think when you, when you read kind of behind the scenes, Kennedy was fairly crass politician, you know, he, but he, he was, he inspired a lot of, of things by yeah. his speeches, by what he would say. At one point, apparently Kennedy was watching all these, uh, p- African-American people marching for, for the, for the rights. And Kennedy was, he asked a question. He said, well, where are these people getting all these ideas from? And his aide said, from you, <laughs> they're listening to your speeches and they're being inspired to pursue. And so, in one sense, Kennedy, um, he he was not a big fan. I think he always worried about political fallout. You know, if he got too tied in with that, would would that cost him votes? Uh, yeah. But but it, it just seemed in many ways as if Kennedy had a charm life, and uh, that he could just whatever he did, it ended up the press uh, put it in the best of light, and his popularity would would go up again and, yeah uh, well and we had the the space race during his time yeah. as well which was a i think he was pretty keen on that yeah and he's the one of course who set the goal that by the end of the decade that yeah. they would and in in in, the, in his time and with uh, under eisenhower the the russians actually had were ahead in the space race yeah. they had put the first man in space and they were ahead and uh, and of course there was fear not just about that but that what could that do if you're firing missiles from space and yeah there, there was fear what if the soviet union controls space and so um he inspired people to do that he inspired the peace corps uh just a number of areas uh where uh, and kennedy maybe the last thing to say is that he had to after he got sort of savaged by khrushchev in vienna he he felt like he had to somehow demonstrate to the Soviet Union that he was strong, um, and so before the I think before the Cuban Missile Crisis, he uh, sends uh, military advisors into Vietnam. He feels like I've got to somewhere uh, oppose a communism. I've got to show that I'm willing to fight. And he doesn't send soldiers in; he sends in military advisors. And there's a lot of evidence to indicate that he did not want to get embroiled in a ground war in, in Vietnam, um, but he he just wanted to do enough to just demonstrate they would they you know would would resist, but not necessarily put in tens of thousands of soldiers. Uh, and there's been a lot of debate about whether if he had been assassinated, if not been assassinated, if Vietnam would have ever become what it did. Right. But, uh, when Lyndon Johnson takes over. Now he's got to try to prove that he's tough, and uh, and the the easiest way it seems to do that is just uh, send soldiers to Vietnam and fight those communists. And so his mm. death also probably puts an end to some, uh, maybe takes off some restraints. And you know what you 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 admire some things about Kennedy. Um, you also realize that so much of what he did was based on politics uh, on what will look good, what will help the ratings, what will help me with this next election. Yeah. Uh, he was just had a bit of a charm life as far as that goes. But, uh, you know, and then his assassination, uh, of course, there's been so many 
uh, conspiracy theories ever since. Well, right. while, while Kennedy was alive, the CIA actually had made plans to try to assassinate Fidel Castro. And they'd even approached some of the um, mafia to see about getting the mafia to use their contacts to take out Castro. So there was always some speculation that maybe Castro retaliated or he helped somehow. Uh, of course, uh, J. Harvey Oswald was, uh, was a communist supporter, a fan. He traveled to the Soviet Union, and there's always been speculation. Was he just a lone, crazy gunman, or was there more involved? And the fact how Oswald gets uh, gunned down himself before he can be really interrogated right. and, uh, and put on trial... It's almost like he was just snuffed out so that yeah, the how truth convenient. would never be known. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. uh, and a guy who kills him, Ruby, uh, is dying of cancer anyway. So he'll die soon with his secrets and in, in still with him. And so I guess because of a lot of that, um, you you look at, you know, he's become a mythical figure. Right. And I might just say at the end, you know, one of the big debates uh, when you look at leadership is... Um, uh, well, you know, this guy's character, I mean, he's a womanizer, he's, he's crass. When you see some of the transcripts, he can use some pretty vulgar language. You know, when he's on camera, he's charming and, and uplifting and wholesome. But we know that uh, there was a, a, a dark side, certainly to him as well, uh, an ambitious side. Uh, but, I, you know, I, and so some people would say, well, can you, can you get any positive lesson from someone that's got a dark side? And I would say, well, you probably, if, if that were the case, you could probably get very few leadership lessons from Anyone. U.S. presidents. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a few, uh, but so many of them, the fact that you desired the presidency and you would do what it took to become president pretty well disqualified a lot of them from having the right character. Uh, but, um, but, you know, my attitude is more you've got to just realize these are all flawed individuals, yeah. every one of them. And it doesn't, you don't condone uh, what they've done, but there are times where you do see how people have grown in their leadership yeah. and they've had some success. And certainly the 60s were a turbulent, turbulent time. Uh, so much uh, turmoil, the civil rights movement, uh, challenging uh, systems in the U.S. that had been so deeply embedded. The Soviet Union at its height of aggression and power yeah. uh, and just so much uh, baby boomers coming on the scene, the Beatles, the rock and roll, so much happening. Uh, how do you govern with so many things swirling about? And, uh, and so an interesting study, you know, I, I think that there'll be many more books. I, I think I, I don't know if I mentioned. Yeah. The, the book, I don't know that you did, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll yeah, leave links to these that. for I, sure. Yeah. I'll just, the, 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 the biography I kind of based it on is by Richard Reeves, president Kennedy, Profile of Power, and maybe just two other books to mention. One that's quite uh, one was written just shortly after he died was by Arthur Schlesinger, A Thousand Days, which is about as long as he actually uh, was president. And Schlesinger was worked on his staff, uh, and so he worked he worked closely with Kennedy. Was a huge fan of his, and so he writes it from that perspective. But it's someone that was in uh, his proximity around him, and is I think a speechwriter, and so he. He knew him well. And then one other book uh, by Robert Dalek, uh, An Unfinished Life, John F. Kennedy. And uh, lots and lots of books written on yeah. him. You might want to read Profiles of Courage as well that he actually wrote. But, um, you know, one of these we could probably talk for a long time about because uh, yeah. there's so much. But uh, certainly worth reading about and, uh, and seeing how even flawed people can make a difference in history. Absolutely. Well, we'll leave links to those uh, books in the show notes. And until next time. Thanks for listening to the podcast. If this is something you enjoyed, it really makes a difference if you leave a review and a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. We always love hearing from our listeners. So email us at podcast at blackme.org.